uh, as you can, I think as we can witness in these times, you know, in the pandemic of, of uh, social injustice, the pandemic of, of um, COVID, I definitely see, well, we see it. We see it in the world. We see the uprisings. We see people struggling with themselves and struggling how to move out in the world as well. And I think, again, going back to that important piece, you know, that we, again, come from a traumatized system. We've been born into it. And if we're not able to get a handle on our own personal and collective trauma, we have great potential to continue repeating the same patterns that have gotten us here in the first place. And so I think with, you know, in terms of some of the work I'm doing now around um, conflict is around anti-racism work, but working with white folks, working with folks, you know, working with me as a white folk, you know, as a white body folk, having to come to grips with my own stuff and then doing that in community with other white body folks so that we can, so we can be in conflict together, you know, and, and, and really start to do this work of checking our own biases, checking our own prejudices, checking how we discriminate, uh, so that we can go into the world, into our workplaces, into our families, and be able to be in wise relationship with our discomfort, our messiness, our shared humanity that is not just being good and nice and, and you know, it really is about embracing our full humanity, the full, as uh, John Kabat-Zinn says, the full catastrophe without collapsing. But, and if we collapse, do we build our capacity or how do we build our ca capacity to get back up again and to be, to make conflict generative, to make conflict about transformation, you know? And I, 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 I know you know I do the work of deep, compassionate listening. And, and to me, the listening piece is the cornerstone of getting at, and I, I, learning a lot from um, Adrian Marie Brown around transformative justice, getting again back to the rattle, getting back to the roots, you know, getting back to being able to really listen to ourselves and listen to others in order to start looking at the root causes of the systems, the root causes of our own systems within ourselves in order to not just restore, because we're not going back, as we all know, you know, it's, it's not about restoring, it's about transforming. So we're co-creating, co-collaborating new ways of being in the world. And I think conflict is one of the ways we need to learn how to be in and be with and, and make it as, as, as Thomas would say, conflict with a world without conflict. And he's not saying violence. You know, a lot of the times we get mixed up with that word violence and conflicts, you know, and he taught me a lot like conflict is inevitable. We've got it. And, and, and what are we going to do with it? You know, in terms of, so yeah. And it gets really tricky when we get those words confused because violence is more, as Thomas would say, is more of a, res a cause, a response and effect. And so if we can really start to see, there's nothing wrong with conflict. Conflict can help us grow. He said a world without conflict would be a boring place, you know, which kind of shakes people up thinking, but it is, it helps us grow. It helps us be better. It helps us, you know, take action. It helps us get out in the world. It helps us get out in our families and not shut down and keep learning. And it's a practice. Conflict is a practice. I see it as a practice. Yeah. Don't be afraid of the messiness. Don't be afraid of the hard stories. Don't be afraid of going deep into your own trauma and your triggers and how we are reacting to the world. Don't, yeah, like, and take, and I, yeah, and this is another one I would say too, in terms of taking that time, because we can, I think Parker Palmer said, you know, uh, violent, uh, busyness can be a form of violence too. We get busy, we get busy, we get busy, and we don't have time to do that work on ourselves. So I would say to adult educators, yeah, like take the time, especially if you're in a position of privilege to be able to take that time, you know, take that time to go deep and, and go deep and get messy and, and, and get into your emotions and get into your body. I think embodiment work is so important right now we hold so much of our trauma in our bodies so i would yeah I would 
get, get any practices, somatic practices that can get you back here, get you in your heart. We move so much from our heads. How do we, you know, move from here to here? So any practices, mindfulness practices, you know, work to go deep and again, find the courage and the vulnerability to, to know that uh, we're not perfect, you know, and, and not let our, our want of perfection be the enemy of good. I don't know who said that, but I heard that the other day. <laughs> and I love it. Yeah. So I think that's what I would offer adult educators. Yeah. <laughs>